Let me show you just a little bit about how we do things here at Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. What's up everybody? This is Travis with Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. I'm one of the many instructors here and one of the first things we have to teach our students is how to tack. So we're going to be going over some basics and some more advanced things as well. The first thing with tacking or any kind of TIG welding is your tungsten. You have to have a sharp tungsten and we use the Scotsman Dewalt Tungsten Sharpener. It's a really handy tool and we'll leave a link at the end of the video so you can pick one up. Alright, you want to make sure your pipe is even and there's no high-low. You want to look at it and make sure that it's nice and smooth on the inside wall. You want to imagine that the pipe is like a clock. We put our tacks at 3, 6, 9, and 12. So that's 4 tacks total. In the first demonstration, he's going to be using the touch start method. He'll be touching his tungsten at the middle of the bottom bevel to start his arc. Notice how he's heating up the bottom bevel then heating up the top, introducing his wire and carrying it back down to the bottom bevel and then back up. After you put in your first tack, move your gap wire. If you don't, you're going to have to fight it to get it out. Right here he's going to be demonstrating how to do a scratch start. It's like striking a match, except for you're using your rod and your tungsten. You hold the rod next to your cup and strike the tungsten just like you would a match. And this is the way you're going to want to start your art. You don't want to get tungsten on your pipe, in your weld, it'll show up on an x-ray. A lot of guys, they don't take some of this stuff serious, as serious as they should. I know it's a little thing, but... Sometimes these little things, man, they, they pile up and make a big difference. When you're tacking, you know, uh, it's critical. If you have a big glob of tack, you know, and you're taking a weld test, it can be hard to overcome that. Now here, he's showing a proper technique on how to terminate your arc. Um, it's just a quick pop-off motion. Um, a lot of guys, we see them kind of rolling the cup up towards the pipe, and uh, that's just a no-no. You know, again, it's a, it's a lot of little things, but these things are critical. It's, in, it's all in the details. So we got our tacks at 3, 6, 9, and 12. And um, now he's going to feather these tacks down. Now, when I say feather the tacks down, what I mean is you want to make the tack thin enough that when you're going to put your root in, that you can just consume the tack with your weld puddle. You know, you don't want to go feathering them out too thin um, because as you start to weld and you quarter your welds, it starts to draw up on you and it'll actually break your tacks if you feather them down too thin. What I like to do is I like to put a good on and off ramp is kind of how I, how I think of it. So when you run your root pass, you know, you won't even be able to tell where your tacks were. You'll have a nice clean wedding band. Now we prep all the pipe here at Alabama Pipe Weathers Academy for our students. So sometimes when you get the pipe, it'll have a knife edge on it. So what you want to do before you even start tacking is you want to take a file and you want to knock that knife edge down. You don't really want to put a landing on it, just enough to take that knife edge to give the root something to hold on to. So all these, all these little things, man, they're, they're like a piece to a puzzle. You know, you gotta, you gotta do all these things, all this prep work, and uh, all these small little, little things, man, they make a huge difference. So right here, we've got a fit block. It's just two pieces of angle welded together, and we use it in the shop. And um, we have a lot of guys, they put our tacks in, and uh, they have big tacks, big grapes hanging down on the center of the pipe. And uh, that comes from trying to put the wire in the middle of the bevel and heat it up and just add wire until it fills up. 
So it's not gonna work. And it's hard to overcome having big nasty tacks like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some wire on the one side of the bevel, then add some wire on the other side of the bevel, and then connect the two. Okay, so here we go. He's gonna strike it, swipe it across, strike it like a match. And we're gonna demonstrate how to properly show this weld. Okay, now he's heating up one side, adding a little bit of wire. Now he's heating up the other side, adding a little bit of wire, then connecting the two. Just like that. Okay, here we're gonna show you how to do a bridge tack. A bridge tack is a tack on the top of the bevel going from one side all the way to the other, making a bridge without getting down into the root wall. Okay, again, he's gonna scratch start so he doesn't touch his tungsten to the pipe. And he's gonna heat up one side, add a little bit of wire, heat up the other, add some more wire, and then carry that over to the other side and make a bridge. That's why they call it a bridge tag, right there. All right, next up we have the bridge tack. A lot of offshore pipelines will use this method because the bevels are so big, you can't actually make a bridge tack. You'd be there all day. So they use this bullet tack out of the parent metal. A lot of 1104 offshore stuff is done this way. So you lay your piece of bullet inside the bevel and you tack each side of the bullet like this. Take this information in guys. This kind of stuff is gonna help you get to the next level. And there you have it, a bullet tack. All right guys, we're moving on to stainless. If you're tacking stainless with a purge, you wanna make sure you have a good purge before you tack. A good way of testing that out is just to heat your wire up, stick it in the pipe, hold it there long enough for it to cool off, then you take it out and check it. If it's a nice shiny gold color, then you have a good purge. If it's not, tape the pipe back up, let it purge some more until all that air gets out of there and try it again. All right, y'all, throughout this video, I've been talking to y'all about the importance of details. So I wanna leave y'all with a story about a man from Chicago who was going on vacation to Florida. His wife was on a business trip and was planning to meet him there the next day. When the man got to the hotel, he decided to send his wife an email, but he couldn't remember what he did with the piece of paper that had the email address wrote on it. So he decided to do the best he could and send it anyway. Unfortunately, he got one letter wrong on the email address, and the email arrived to an elderly pastor's wife whose husband had just died one day earlier. As soon as she read the email, she let out a scream, fainted, and fell out on the floor. When her family heard the scream, they ran into the room and saw the email on the screen. Dear wife, just got checked in. Everything is prepared for your arrival tomorrow. Your loving husband. P.S. Sure is hot down here. So pay attention to the details, guys. One little letter can make all the difference in the world.